I think it's important to get his insight to this because I think there are some theories. Now, I don't, I don't know that I, I don't believe the theory about him, but there are some theories that involve him. <laughs> okay. The internet just, has just, just read it and go from there. Okay. I think I know where you're going. But yeah. Let's, 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 let's read his and go. So on. her husband writes, thank you. I have stopped responding to those that do not know anything about the disappearance, the search, the circumstances leading up to the dreadful day. She and Tootsie disappeared, which was also their one year anniversary of when they got married, by the way. Um, oh, <laughs> I have given the professional searchers, uh, the PGJ and E personnel and all other people involved in the search, all of the information I have. They have her PC, her Chromebook, passwords for all of her accounts, uh, her detailed cell phone information, both cameras that are pointed out, pointed at our back door and parked cars. Uh, they have all the videos from two days before we left, uh, left to take the wedding party to the waterfall. So uh, I couldn't remember this before, but yeah, the hiking group they're with was the wedding party. Oh, so, okay. Um, and then until 10 days after the disappearance. The information in the official's hands, um, so he says, the information is, is in the official's hands and will put to bed the rumors that I and the family have read on Facebook. So what he's alluding to is that someone in the family or him were responsible for her disappearance. Okay. So, <laughs> And I can see that happening on the internet of people just yeah immediately just going and just dumping all over them no matter what. Yeah, I mean, I, Joe and I even take criticism for how we cover some of these cases, but we're very mindful to, you know, be respectful of the families. I think random people commenting on stuff on the internet don't care. Yeah, <laughs> you're just going to find angry people that are angry, and it doesn't really matter what you say. Yeah, so um, that's kind of the end of the timeline. I just have some other little tidbits of information and details that I find interesting and or strange <laughs> before we get into theories. So... One of them was the, they did eventually get a tracker dog and it was unable to pick up any clear scent of a uh, cat or Tootsie. And it's not like it was raining. I mean, yeah. You get 15 inches a year. It's a very yeah. dry tempered place. So, I mean, it, you should be basically sustaining anything that was there for the dog to find. And, you know, I, I have a dog when I take it on a walk, it, it pees a lot and it, you know, it yeah. leaves smells all over the place. You would think that, her dog, if it was still alive, would be out there drinking water, going to the bathroom, you know, eating stuff, something very easy for a tracking dog to pick up. Absolutely. Um, so the, the dog didn't pick up anything. Um, interesting note, the Mexican police during the search did find some pot fields uh, that were way, way off in the backcountry uh, from where they were hiking, and they, the military destroyed the farms, but they made the comment that the people who tend these farms are passive. So, you know, like the cartels sure. own them, but the, the farmers that are working them are probably. Yeah. So it won't be people who just shoot you on site with no questions. Like they'll probably leave you alone. Yeah. They said and if they know that area. They'll know if it's people who will just be like, shoot you, bury it. Don't even think about it. Versus if they're saying, Oh, these are passive growers, they'll be fine. Yeah. And I mean, the cartels aren't out there camping all night watching their pot fields that they have the, the farmers that are out there tending to them probably live around the fields. And, you know, the Mexican military said that these people are passive. And if they saw any signs of people coming, they just run off. Okay. Like they just leave. So, um, you know, even if she somehow could have walked that far and found one of these farms, uh, that, you know, unless she got there at the perfect time, like the cartel was there, these farmers would have run off. And another thing you got to think about too is, you know, these pot farmers and probably even the cartels do not have an incentive to hurt a hiker that finds their field, because if they hurt somebody or take them, you know, that is going to bring lots of, you know, yeah. authorities into the area <laughs> yeah, searching for All the for people them. that showed up and found yeah, them. And yeah. then destroyed their fields. So, you know, there is incentive to, to just not, you know, I mean, it's not like, you know, marijuana field. I don't know. So I think there's incentive for her not to be hurt from these farmers. So I, sure. you know, and it was so far off. I don't think she could ever even reached it. Yeah. If she's not even making it up the easy trail to the waterfall, yep. why is she going to go far off in the distance and stumble upon a, a marijuana grow? Yeah. <clears throat> um, one other just interesting note. I did mention just a few moments ago that this was her one year anniversary of her wedding, the day she went missing. So, it, it's like to the day? To the day. Oh, geez. So, that could be a coincidence. I mean, it is a coincidence. I'm not accusing the husband of any foul play, but 
the authorities actually at one point, uh, after they had searched the area for a while, they had the opinion that Kat wasn't even, they found no indication that she was even in the location. So they actually really? made her husband provide photographic evidence that she was there that day. So they found so little they thought they were lying about the whole thing? Yeah. Like they, maybe you're lying about her death to cover something up. Yeah, maybe she never even went hiking with you. Like, Wow, so he's like, us. hey, here's our group photo from here's the... Yeah, she, they had, he had a photo of her leaning against a cactus from that day that they were able to photo stamp, like time stamp to that day. Jeez. Now, obviously, you know, anything can be faked, but I th- it was sufficient enough that the Mexican police uh, believed him. But it's just interesting that there was that such a pristine area that they thought she wasn't even there. <laughs> so Yeah, they're that confused by like... They'd expect to find something, and something. they found so little. They're like, okay, now the new theory is your whole group is lying. She was never even with you. Yeah. And uh, just a couple other notes. Like I mentioned, um, she does have a YouTube channel, so if anyone's interested to see what she was like, you can go visit that channel. Um, a couple more things about the trailhead. Uh, you know, like in U.S. national parks, kind of in the, the main area, there's probably some security cameras that you, you might get you know, recorded on. There are no cameras in this area. So there's no evidence of people coming and going. Uh, the trailhead, you, you know, you got to drive 33 miles on a dirt road just to get to the trailhead. And sometimes the road gets washed out. Um, so that was why they said that even abduction doesn't seem like a good theory because they found no evidence of any other vehicles coming or going. Yeah. I mean it, so that's a puzzling, you know, fact about the case. And, uh, you know, a couple final things was uh, her family and friends said she was very familiar with desert survival. So, and she has actually been lost before in the desert. So she, not only does she have experience in hiking this type of climate, she's actually been lost. Jeez. <laughs> so you, if she got injured and was just stuck out there somewhere, she has a good understanding of what she's got to do she's to survive. She survived at one time and... Now this time she's on a trail with people. Like yeah. Quite literally need to stay in one spot the whole time. A and quarter of a mile from her car. Yeah. <laughs> that is with her dog. That's wild. So, um, what what do you think? What do you think? Oh. What? Come on, you go first this time. Oh boy. Um, I had so many theories and you blew most of them out of the water <laughs> like when you're going through what they were thinking and what they said. So, well, I'll I'll go into a couple <clears throat> of the theories that law enforcement and family had. Okay. So. Law enforcement at one point suspected that someone in the group had been involved with her disappearance. Um, like we said, either she died before she the hike even happened or something happened on the hike. But it, they were all comprehensively questioned, and the police came away satisfied that none of them had anything to do with her disappearance. I was going to say, the, the main group was together. Yeah. The only one that would be, I would say, risky is the husband. However... He had no idea that she was going to not make the hike. If but he was also it. back at the car with another person. Oh, okay. The so group. there you go. Even yeah. if he's by himself, it's like, how does he know she's going to stop? Yeah. She would have to stop, actually hike back to the car, and he would have to pull something off yeah. and then cover it up. So, which is, uh, But if he's with somebody else who's corroborating his statements, mm-hmm. this is wild. Yeah. So um, that was the main police theory. And I don't think the police ever released, uh, and this case isn't that old. It's only a few years old. Um, from everything I could find, the police never really research, released another official theory. Um, so her family and friends have a couple theories. Um, one of the main theories they had was it was thought that maybe she had gotten lost, but her husband refutes this, claiming that she could barely walk at the time uh, that he sus- uh, suspected her foot had been broken. So he thinks it was a little more serious than just like twisting your ankle. Um, there were also no signs, like we said, of any other vehicles in the vicinity. And the nearest road was at several miles away. So it, it seemed in her condition very unlikely she could have gotten very far, especially in 90 minutes. Yeah. And if her foot's actually broken, I'd argue probably wouldn't be able to, you know, really walk anywhere. No, I agree. Yeah, uh, I think I think that would be very difficult for her to do. So a couple other theories that her husband had, and I mean, some of these go from, you know, quicksand. I don't even I don't know if there's quicksand in that area. Yeah. Or she fell in a mine shaft or a well. Um, you would think that if there are any mine shafts out there, the search and rescue teams would know those and look look in them. 
Um, you know, it's possible she did go for a walk and got lost and climbed into a cave and was bitten by a snake. Uh, again, if that was the case, a tracking dog would find that, especially if there had been no precipitation before the dog got there. If it's just... Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's we talked to the guy who worked with the dogs, and he's like, you know, uh, if it's raining, you know, how it works is people are shedding skin all the time and shedding yeah. oils, and that's what they smell. So there's dogs that you can still pick up scents after a rainfall. Yeah. It's just more difficult. But you're in a dry area that everything just kind of sitting there. Yeah. There's no reason any of her scent should be that gone. Or again, if they're tracking the dog, that dog's gonna shed like crazy. Yeah. So if they weren't unable to track the dog or the person, that's yeah. that's pretty wild. So, you know, he also said maybe it was an abduction, but again, there's no sign of a struggle. There's no tracks from a vehicle anywhere around where she went. Well, and missing. that's where I would say you've people, it's not like it's a loop. Yeah. And you've people on both ends of this I know. trail. <laughs> That's, oh, it's so wild. Yeah. Uh, so he, he said maybe she followed the stream downhill for some reason. There was a stream that she was near. Um, but, again, I just don't see her getting very far at all. I mean, Joe, we were on a hike when you banged up your knee. Yeah. And you're a young guy. And, and my foot. And, and your foot. And, my, and then the separate hike of my and foot when I couldn't even walk that one day. Yeah, you were a guy in your early, tw- early late 20s, and yeah. you were having a hard time going down the trail. Yeah. Like, now – you know, fast forward to a woman who's 68 that just beat liver cancer, has a bunch of broken toes already. Uh, and Props is weak to her from for going out. If I was going through that, I probably wouldn't even go hiking. Yeah, so I, good I wouldn't for either. her. She's got, like, the will of a tiger. So, yeah, I just don't think she would have had the, the ability to go very far, you know. And if she's experienced in hiking and desert survival, she would, would have never left the trail. Why would she leave the trail? I mean, anyone who hikes knows that, your best friend is the trail if something happens. Oh, especially if you're by yourself. <laughs> yeah. Because you can, it's so easy to get lost going off the trail. It's ridiculous. I was just having this conversation with somebody the other day. I'm like, if you do not have a map and a compass, or even if you do and you don't know how to read it, yeah, just stay where there's signs. Stay where there's markings because you will just get lost. Well, yeah, we were talking on our Zoom call that, you know, if if anybody ever gets lost in the, the woods, uh, as soon as you realize that you're lost, just stop. Yes. Don't go any farther if you're truly lost and are completely confused about your location because the searchers only know where to look based on your last known uh, location. So if you had told a, a ranger station, I'm going to hike this trail, I'll be out in three days, well, they know you were on that trail at this time somewhere. Yeah, the initial focus, where most of their energy is, where the concentration of the search is going to begin in that area. Yeah. So if you're not in that area, the the risk of you not being found grows exponentially is the farther you go away from your initial plant spot. Yeah. If you're confused and turn around and just start wandering around, you're going to walk right out of their search area and you know, they may still find you, but they may not. And so that's a little, a little tangent. Um, some other theories before I get into the, kind of what I think happened or well, I don't know what happened in this one. This one is, we say this every episode, but this one truly baffles me. <laughs> yeah. I, um, so, you know, the me- some of the media think that maybe it has something to do with those illicit marijuana fields. I, again, I think you can blow this right out of the water by first, they were very far away from where they were hiking. Nowhere well, near and, where and she could get of, to. And you got to, like, what is the motive? Mm-hmm. What's the, like, they don't, like you said, they're not going to want to cause trouble. Yeah. She's not stumbling upon them. No. She's on a trail in a national forest that's used An to oasis hike. in the middle of deserts. Yeah, like, so the, if you're going to go hiking, it's probably the only place people are going to go. Even though it is less traveled, it's it's a traveled spot. Yeah. Anytime you hear about those grows, they're, like, off in the middle of nowhere. And the point is because they don't want people around. They don't want to be found. They don't want to be stumbled upon. They don't want to be found. So and they exactly, would have to come from wherever they were yeah. to her without taking main roads or the main trail from like the sides yeah, and abduct her for whatever reason. Now, they, okay, let's pretend all that happened. Yeah. Why would they take her? Why? Why wouldn't they walk by and pretend to be other hikers if they're worried about getting, like, why exactly. would it, there's, I don't see a good motive for that. Even though I, I would say like with cartels, I'm not going to attribute. And like, they're probably not moving it during the day. They well, probably yeah. do their movements at night. And yeah, it's, uh, it's and our th- our whole theory about their incentive not to do anything happened because all these search and rescue people came in and they ended up destroying the marijuana fields, which is what they don't want to happen. Or so let's say someone's trying to abduct her and 
her dog starts attacking them or runs away or something like yeah. you, that's where you, I would see like, maybe there's blood, a scuffle, something. They shoot the dog to kill it. You could hear a gunshot. They stab it. There's blood. They there's, would have all heard a gunshot. Yeah. So like, let's pretend it's a knife and they stab the dog and they stab her blood. Maybe, or something. Yes. There's, Hair. there's things that happen and, and forensic stuff you can find. And even if the dog none ran of it's there. away, like the Todd Hofflander case, they ended up finding the dog. Yeah. Cause dogs, dogs are intelligent. They, uh, when I go, a dog up, can track its way back. Yeah, when we go hunting up north, when uh, there's been several times where we've kind of gotten turned around, and the dog, your best friend, when that situation is the dog, the dog literally walks back the trail you just did, and it will get you back to your car. So you know, even if her she got abducted and her dog ran away, it would be safe to assume that dog would eventually make its way back to either where she got hurt or back to where the car was sure. or to just any sounds they were yelling. And yeah. The, calling the dog's name. Yeah. Like the husband <laughs> yeah. who also is the dog's owner. Like he'd recognize that call. So, yeah. So what is your theory? What do you think? Well, I didn't even get into the craziest theory. Oh my gosh. So uh, see, I'm already, it's already, so, okay. Are we getting like supernatural here? Like, what's oh yeah. Cra- okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I might believe it based on all this crap. So, so um, This theory comes from a gentleman uh, who I will not mention by name, (laughs) Uh, but uh, the theory, and he is not the only one that has this theory. A lot of other people have said this, and it actually has some roots in ancient Norse society. Okay. So um, the ancient, I guess you ancient Vikings, we'll say, um, believed that there were entities that lived in the rocks. And in Iceland... Uh, they called these supernatural beings uh, Landvetter. And they are land spirits on whom the prosperity of the land depends. So they're kind of like keepers of the of nature. Okay. And I can imagine that uh, if you destroy something and cut a tree down or do something, that they would attack you. And they live in the land, usually particularly attractive rocks and boulders. And the folklore, like I said, dates all the way back to ancient Norse societies. And many in Iceland to this day still treat them with respect. It's kind of like a folklore kind of thing. And there's a lot of bolt, big boulders where cat went missing. So this uh, individual who, you know, came up with this theory said maybe something supernatural is going on. Uh, maybe it's these Here's boulder the deal. entities. Here's the deal. <laughs> so far, that makes some of the most sense. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my theory. I. Uh, I always go through what I don't think it is. I don't think it's an animal attack. I agree. They'd see the scuffle. They There's no animals in the, the park that really pose a threat to her, mm-hmm. uh, especially not that short a time, and with a German Shepherd. German Shepherds are 100 pounds. That dog. will scare away. Uh, so, like, the only thing I could think of from the list of animals would be some of the cats. Yeah. The two big cats, and the dog would most... Maybe at night, though. Maybe at night, but most certainly the dog would keep them away. Yeah. Dog will def- like A German Shepherd will defend their owner to death. I Absolutely. Mean, uh, so I don't think it was an animal attack. Um, I don't think it had any of the theories that involve her moving from where she got injured, just because based she on had two broken feet, basically. F- yeah, two broken what, feet, five broken toes between the two. Yeah, or was it three on one side and two on the other? Something like that. Yeah. yeah, it's and she was weakened from you know liver cancer and a heavy smoker. I just don't see her moving very far so from in Zion. Yeah. We were in the narrows in water for the days. Remember my blisters were terrible. I was actually worried about infection. I got like the cream and stuff. Yeah. And I had to take an entire day off. I couldn't walk at all. Yeah. And I had hiking poles and that was just blisters. I know if I had, bro- and that's on, they were like on the sides of my foot, your toes, when you're walking, yeah, they roll on them. <laughs> if I had broken toes, like, I would probably be so painful. Like, yes, I was younger and I could deal with the pain more, but I still needed a whole day off. Yeah. She just went through chemo. She's older. She has five broken toes or several broken toes between her two feet. She's not going anywhere. No, she couldn't even make it up this trail. Yeah. So she, like, I can't see her wandering off or even if she's like, maybe she's sitting in the sun and goes look for shelter. She's not going a mile away. So like, if you're looking off trail, like for a rock outcropping Mm -hmm. or a little cave, like, I feel like you have a bunch of people searching. They could find, hey, this lady had a broken foot and was sitting right here. This is where we left her. Yeah. Where would she wander off to go? And why would she have incentive to go find shelter when she knew they'd be back in 90 minutes? That's not a very long time. Yeah. I mean, uh, so I don't, I don't think that is an, you know, an accurate theory. Um, I mean, I know I don't, because it's such a recent case and the family is still alive and active on Facebook, I don't want to you know, accuse anybody of anything. 
This is just, in my head, this is just the theory that makes the most sense based on the facts. So no emotion. No emotion. This is what could be in your head. In my head, just that's, because. I think that's fair to fair to. Fair if, to if anyone listening, think about all the stuff we just said and what makes the most sense. I personally don't think she ever was there hiking. That, her or her dog. So what would the benefit be for her, her husband, the group? To see, now that, I, I, I don't know. I, it's a little coincidental that this was her one-year anniversary from her wedding. I See, I don't even see that because if I lived somewhere and taught English and got close with like a village, mm-hmm. like say I go to, like I went to Africa and I got pretty close with the guys I hiked with. Like if I ever go back to Tanzania, I'm Facebook friends with them. I'm definitely going to meet up with those people. And I was only there for 13 days. Yeah. If I spent 20 years in a community there and I wanted to go somewhere on vacation, I'd probably go there. Yeah. So like I could say, oh, it's my one year anniversary. I'm going to bring my husband back to this place I lived and like participate in the, the stuff here. I don't know. So it doesn't even seem weird to me that she's there. But it, just thinking then. through that theory, I think I've already blown it out of the water because her daughter was there too. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. like, okay, say a husband and wife are so fighting that he's like, yeah, I'm going to take her out on this hike and disappear. But her daughter is there. Like her daughter's not going to go, you know, her daughter's not going to be in on that plan and then lie about it to the authorities or the other people in the group. Like, are they all going to lie and tell the well, same that's, story? That's the thing is like, if she went out with just close family, if it was just her and her husband. Yeah. And there's like, Oh, Hey, he took out a life insurance policy <laughs> when they got married, like something like that. Like, okay, that's suspicious. So I just, but I just talked through, you know, <laughs> blowing up my own theory in live, you know? Yeah. Well, it's, it's a whole idea of initially I thought when you first started the case, I'm like, Oh, cartel activity, hundred yeah. percent, like remote. And they're like, no, she knows the area, no cartel in the area. I'm like, okay, that, that finished that. Then I'm like, okay, maybe it was the husband for whatever reason. No, he was with somebody and he didn't even go on the hike. Yeah. So he wouldn't have even known. And her daughter is there. And her, well, it's, she, she wouldn't just have known, lie about it. Yeah. She wouldn't have known she stopped. <laughs> yeah. As far as he's concerned, she's with this group going to the waterfall. And from what it sounded like, he didn't know anything was wrong until they came back and informed like, hey, she stayed behind. She's not there anymore. Yeah. Her daughter, among the other people, are the ones that went to the waterfall. Yeah. And it was her and her dog. Yeah. So, like, did she, I, here's here's a crazy one. Did she say, I'm going to wait here, ended up, you know, being stubborn, hiked back to the car, and her husband did something then. But her husband was with another guy's wife. Her husband wife was with another car. guy. Exactly. Yeah. It was with another car. And what? He had less than an hour to accomplish whatever thing he was going to accomplish that he had before the no. whole, before her daughter and all the other people exactly. get there. Exactly. And yeah. it would be, okay, how would he know if he was pre-planning something? Yeah. Uh, this was a sprung on him. Yeah. It was spur of the moment. It's not like he planned for those events Where to happen. Where would he hide the body it, of her and the dog? In that short time. <laughs> and then, so it's, I can't see foul play. And he's an older gentleman based on um, stuff I read. And someone said he even has a, some health conditions too. So like. Well, and what is the motive? What's the motive to do what it? What is the motive? There really isn't one. And it just nothing lines up to make it. So she, <laughs> this one, I think I'm going with Boulder entities. I mean, that literally, seriously, <laughs> yes, <laughs> that literally. We're makes gonna lose the most listeners because we're like, yeah, Boulder entities. I'm like uh, Giorgio Papalopoulos or whatever that guy's name is. Yeah, you have the crazy from, hair from Ancient Aliens. <laughs> yes, I. I mean, anyone listening, after you've heard these the facts of this case, if any of you can come up with like a reasonable explanation of what happened to her her dog, what happened to their bodies, why nothing was found. I'll send you a hat for free. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Anything that like makes us go. Yes. Maybe. Yes. That's great. Great deal. Yeah. If you have a theory that says, yes, maybe I'm going to throw one on the table just to make it harder. (laughs) Maybe she found a cave and fell in it. Okay. I I mean, maybe, maybe she was getting hot. So your theory can't be mine shaft or cave. Yeah. I would say, cause maybe if she was sitting there like knowing it was going to be an hour and a half, and got hot, I'm going to go look for a cave. But she's near but, water. But, she but could just if I off. was going to do that, I would leave something on the trail. Yeah. If I'm going to leave the trail and sit somewhere else where I can't see the trail, yeah. I would leave something with a note or whatever. A, I would never do it. Yeah. But if I was going to, I'd be like, okay, hey, maybe I should give people an idea of where I'm going. Yeah. I don't so, know. I So, yeah, if anyone can, you know, leave a comment that a detailed explanation of what you think happened that isn't like... uh easily disproved like 
oh, she walked 40 miles to the pot farm and got killed. Like, that's not, yeah, that, that didn't that's happen. not real. It's got to be realistic. Yeah. And we'll be fair. I mean, it's just a hat. We'll send you a hat. We're not going to go crazy, but you got to come up with a good theory then. Yeah. Because <laughs> right now I'm going and, and with Boulder super, Supernatural. Yeah. Super, <laughs> you can't come up with a different supernatural theory. Yeah. We're going with Boulder yeah, Entities. Yeah. Boulder Entities is the top one right now I outside of the other stuff. I feel ashamed that our theory is supernatural based only because we've never had an episode where it's so puzzling that I go with the supernatural theory. Yeah. That's never happened before. Yeah, because we've had puzzling cases, but they're like, hey, in reality, it could have been X, Y, Z. Yeah. Because even um, one of the early Paul Davis ones, remember they couldn't find, they ended up finding his body. It was just in a different spot. Oh, the guy from Canada. Exactly. Like, so that one was seemed like, wow, that was such a short loop, but he was by himself. Only one person saw him. Like, it was like, yeah. okay. And it was a heavily crime area. Where, like, he wasn't hey. injured. Yeah, he wasn't injured. So like, even then it seemed like out of nowhere, but there are a lot of things that could have happened that made sense. Yeah. And in this one, there is not. I mean, probably the, the best non-paranormal theory is, yeah, she went off trail a little bit, and maybe the, the trail, the area around the trail is more treacherous terrain-wise than we're, we know about. But then and, the dog. And she fell in a crevasse. Yeah, but what are the odds she and the dog fall in a crevasse? That's true. Why like would if the, dog, she's the dog's walking. not going to jump in after I, I mean, maybe the dog would probably sit at the top and just yeah, like, wait. bark a lot. Like, yeah. like, yeah, like start making a ton of noise, start running around and go crazy. I don't know. I don't know. This <laughs> one is absolutely puzzling to me. And maybe she was so good to the land. The boulder entities took her and she's now a boulder entity. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and that's why I didn't want to, because it's such a recent case. It's not like a case that happened 40 years ago. I don't want to slander the family because they are still active on Facebook well, and, and here's the deal. I, I don't think there's sufficient evidence pointing that it was foul no, play. No, I don't think there's I any don't. evidence. And I would be, I would say, hey, sorry if this is not, but it, it, this is a real possibility. I would say, yes, it, hey, it looks like there's a real possibility a husband could have done it. Yeah. But I don't see it. If it said like, oh, they took out a giant life insurance policy and he took it out in her name three months before the trip. Right. And it's way bigger than what their careers make sense for. And there's no like, indication hey, that they were fighting or arguing or anything. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like there's not any... Thing like that that's like ah it's a little bit of red and her daughter no the, red the thing that it, her daughter was there yeah like if her daughter well pretend her husband and her daughter were in on it then right. there's other people there yeah. that she's friends with, another like, six people, people there. from the village yes yeah. there's too many people involved for it to be something like that unless the entire group was in on it which just seems well then what's the motive <laughs> it seems less likely than boulder entities <laughs> yeah i know right there's no motive so so this one is totally stumped us. Um, like we said, if you guys listening can come up with a theory that you can, you know, argue and we think it's a good one, we'll send you a free hat. Yeah, I think <laughs> what's crazy is we've had some pretty crazy cases. This one seems so simple. Yeah. I'm with you. This is like the most confusing one to me. I am puzzled it's by such it. a short I can't trail. imagine being the family. Like, you were there just 90 minutes you know what, ago. The only <laughs> one that comes close is the two guys in the mountain – where he like went ahead around the bend. Oh, uh, Tom Messick. Yes, the hunters. No, not the hunters. The one where they're climbing Mount. Ra was it was around oh, Mount Rainier. Duval, Sam Duval. Maybe. Yeah. But like he like went around a corner and his buddy just came around. There were people on both ends and he was gone. But even then, it was a snow covered mountain with crevasses yeah. and stuff. Like th this one is like. I think that's when we got in trouble on Twitter with. I'm sure. <laughs> We've gotten in trouble a couple times. We don't try, but that's just not what with happens. Twitter, but with the people that yeah. use Twitter. <laughs> so yes, send us your theories. If it's a decent one, we'll send you a hat. Yeah. <laughs> send us your theories and it will pick it and we'll say, yep, you got it. If you got it, we'll mention the Honestly, show. Honestly, if we'll probably pick one of the theories and just send you a hat anyways, because yeah. now we said it. Yep. Yeah, now we said it. Just, <laughs> just involve yourselves. It just can't be insane. If it's, if it's insane and dumb, we're it not can't be you a UFO abduction. Yeah. That's the same thing as Boulder people. Yeah, and we already said Boulder people.